Geezers, what's going on? Spessy here. Today we're playing a Hyperthin deck with Reants. This is very similar to the Hyperthin deck I posted previously. The key difference being uh, we've added Reants into there. Reants actually got buffed this month, uh, which has slipped under the radar. It's now 6 power, 12 provisions. I think when this card was first printed, it was 5 power, 13 provisions. So it has quite a lot of buffs. Obviously, in a Hyperthin deck, you're thinning to zero. So the order of setting the power of a unit uh, to match the number of cards in your deck can be used to remove one of your opponent's cards. So if your opponent doesn't have that 6 removal, um, they're going to really struggle, and yeah, it's not that easy in a short round three to have removal for Reance. Um, so I'm pretty optimistic about uh, the power level of the card. The other things I've included, um, I've kicked Nickers from the deck because Reance is giving us one extra thinning. Obviously, Nickers now being eight provisions, this seemed like the worst thinning card. Um, and we've added basically a Vigo. Vigo is one of the other ways we can um, get Oldbridge on top of our deck with cards like Blightmaker and Coria and Vicavara Novice being options. Um, it's not the highest power card, but it's basically just giving us a bigger Albridge. So you might also want to just consider playing something different in this slot. Um, like a Dodrick, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Buy a Vigo. We're not even playing Vigo, guys. We're playing Dodrick. <laughs> this is the card I forgot. Something's not quite right here. Uh, Fisher King, Blight Makeup. Obviously are there to be putting in your um, Albridge on top. Corrier is similar as well. Uh, Maxi can be used to put Rico at the bottom of your deck. That's going to mean that um, you can then re your Rico in round 3 pretty reliably. And you're not going to be drawing Rico before that, hopefully. Um, Couriers, Adepts, Novice. I put a Spores in there as well, just as a tool punish. Because uh, we don't really want to use Vilga Forts offensively. We want to be using it on our own card to thin out our old bridge. So yeah, is it it? Let's crack on. Okay, we're up against Ons. What does in it mean? It means isn't it. It means... Yeah, something like that. Alright, well, we obviously don't want all bridge in hand. Unless we have a novice, then we're fine with it in hand. We also don't want to play Reans round one. We have a novice so we can keep it in hand. I never want to play Exarthius round one either, so let's just get rid. How many one off at twos? This is the second one. It's just a marketing ploy, right? It's pretty dumb, honestly. Don't you pester me. It's Modern Warfare 2, number two. Because people will buy it because it's called Modern Warfare 2, right? When the reality of the situation is it's definitely not a model. It's not, it's not the same. Them with hunger. Crush them with thirst. I hope I've done the maths right on the thinning. I mean, I kicked Nickers and added Rian, so it should be just fine. Both Major Stats in the hand is particularly nice. So... Let's do this. And I think we're going to put... Rich to the bottom first. Rico to the bottom is also really nice for us. I think we take the snowdrop here, to be honest. Like, while I have Baldrick, it's just an engine, and I can even slam leaders to protect this. Like, it's just so many stats, right? Um, snowdrop first. Then let's put our Rico to the bottom. We have the perfect hand for this. So we leader first. And we go Major Assassin, Major Assassin, Albridge. This is so many stats, mate. It's insane. Major Assassin, Major Assassin, Albridge. Of course, we're going to click the Snowdrop too. We're going to shuffle away the Albridge. And the Spores can go as well. Oh my god, Albridge high rolled on top! We just shuffled Albridge to the top with Snowdrop. That's actually ridiculous. <laughs> That's unbelievable. But she locked the Snowdrop. Um. Albridge is already on top, but let's just put him on top again. Then put him into our hand. Bottom of the deck. We can 
light maker. I guess we maybe want to take the adept next anyway. So our Albridge is already chilling at 14, mate. Let's do this first. I think uh, Maxi can go to the bottom. I'll bright maker it back to the top. Yeah, this just proves that lock was a miss right? It's a really good card to have got from them. Obviously, we'd like to win on even sunset. Uh, we also know we're getting Vilg, which I don't want to play. I actually have a feeling the correct play here is just to play Adept. And um, then again, Adept is like super bad here. We could also take the pass. It's actually not a bad pass. Obviously, I'm threatening to win on even pretty heavily, though. The Sunset Wanderers jumping out. We know Rico's near the bottom, so we're never hitting it. And yeah, we know Vilgefortz is the next card I get. I think we do this. I can't remember what the next card was, to be honest. Wow, yeah, you see, we're forcing them to use compass this early. That's never going to be a good thing for them. They really just discard their flipping scenario, bruv. What is happening there? Uh, they have to leader as well to have enough. Pass if they don't need her. Um, so I could play spores on my own card for plus two. It's also milling them, right? Very unfortunate. Oh, through on leader, thanks. Yeah, oh, lovely. So we're not even. We know like the bomb cards are there, like Rico, Reince, Orbridge. They forfeit. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all. of nature i have a um, uh thrive deck built as well which we'll probably play today which is using carapace on cursed damsels i think it might actually be better than force of nature i have a hunch it might be secretly really really good look at me building decks again you guys aren't ready mate i haven't been building decks recently i've just been net decking so we have no way of actually putting getting on mate on top. I think we just go for the early Godric. There's no agents. I mean, I could go Korra, but I don't want to play the Korra without knowing what's on top. To do business with ever I very much doubt they can answer this. There's also an argument instead of the sports to play like Mahakam Ale or Pella or something. Also, the Adepts didn't perform well in the first game, so we could consider cutting them maybe. 
Let's take the dead man's tongue first. Probably just on the adepts, mate, honestly. A superb specimen, truly. And then we're going to put the cards we don't want until later at the bottom. So let's put Triss at the bottom first because Yennefer we can put at the bottom after Sunset Wanderers has gone the other side of it, right? Just improving our Sunset Wanderers. Um, we're going to play Blightmaker next. Let's put Albridge on top, but importantly we'll go... And click the Doderick first. Because we don't want to put Albridge on top. We don't want to put Albridge in hand. We want to actually draw something useful. I bring death. Quite literally. And yeah, if we find Snowdrop this early, we would play her, I'm pretty sure. So in the last game, the engine value you get from her is really significant. Could also consider playing Le uh, Letho in this deck. So, we should take the Courier first. We could also just like. Maker again next. Pretty spooky. Okay, we should do this first. No good wine will come from here. Not even come. So if we had Snowdrop now, we'd have the perfect leader, right? Double Mage Assassin and Albridge. Fortunately, we do not. I'm pretty sure we're not supposed to click Dodrick this turn. We definitely want round control, right? Like, we don't want to be having round control this matchup. Huh, that was not in the spell books. not ideal at all but i don't really see what other choice we had unfortunately we just didn't have the snowdrop right we can slam leader though we find snowdrop this round we just slam leader to try and get our uh, cards back there we go so we're just gonna slam leader pretty much and then maybe pass spores can go from this hand rico also so we're just gonna go snowdrop slam leader bang 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 Big snowdrop, unfortunately, that means we're going to have to shuffle the old bridge back. So is it better, ever better to snowdrop first? Because then old bridge stays on top. I think that makes more sense. We don't actually want to move old bridge from the top. And we get rid of the spores. And... Oh my god, we high rolled the old bridge again with Snowdrop. Let's go, that's ridiculous. It's utterly bonkers, actually. Yeah, Spores is a card we maybe need to look at because maybe it's just, it's just not good enough on average. We don't know if we can re -end. We know old bridge is the top card. We shuffled Rico back at some point, so it could be anywhere. Uh, 
I mean, no, it's definitely not, though. No high roll, just how leader works. Oh, right, right, ignore me. I didn't shuffle it back with Snowdrop, did I? I'm being dumb. Yeah, forgive me. Last game, we actually did high roll. This game, I didn't. Because usually, like, you order it differently, but in this situation, I Snowdrop first. I'm so used to Snowdropping second, which is why I was getting confused there. So we could maxi now to put Rico on the bottom, for example, and then we could high roll Albridge to the top potentially. We could just not play this card also. I figure maxi in round three is guaranteed to work. I think this is a pass. This is like a one in five that maxi actually is good here, whereas I think next round. It's going to be guaranteed. Let's hope I've got the thinning right with the deck as well. We haven't actually checked yet. This is like the moment to see if I'm even, I've even got the correct thinning in the deck. It's like a thinning card that I forgot. Hey, Loom, what's up? And yeah, I can definitely show the profit this game. Getting the other Incubus out is really good. These cards are serious. It's like, oh, and it's not even enough. Wow. If they if they play uh, oh my god so they're actually carrying over the selfie to at eleven, which is interesting. So we are down a card and they have carry over, but I think considering how round one went, we're pretty happy with that. So of course we don't want Albrecht in hand and we don't want Rico. Why do I feel like we're not thinning enough, chat? <laughs> We're not thinning enough by one. Why is that? I guess I just built the deck badly. Ah, that's really frustrating. Yeah, but Reince is thinning once, but then that's still not enough, right? I should be thinning one more card. I'm sure the only difference is I don't have Knickers in this version compared to the other one. But there must be another thinning card that I forgot. I'll have a look after this game. So Maxi's a 50-50. It should be 100%. Just a 50-50. We could offensively Volg. Like, this card has so many stats. Then we're going to miss out on the old bridge. So we don't want to offensively Volg. Fifty fifty on if Albrich goes on top, it doesn't. So if it my understanding is how this works then, that means Spores is on top, Albrich is second. It's a super awkward man. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm just taking the 50-50. Which we lose. Now we'll take the Reants. But yeah, we're not thinning enough by one. Uh, not all shuffle effects appear to... Trigger the boost, Snowdrop does, but Exarth doesn't. Interesting. Why have they not clicked this card? What are they gonna do with this? Okay, something's gone wrong there. Best yield now. I'm assuming they don't have a tool punish. We just lose, right? They do. I don't nibble at them, they fall right out. There will be rain. I'll get in. Frost, perhaps. And yeah, obviously we should be setting some like we should be killing something with re but we're gonna be saying it to one. So I've messed up the deck. So we're gonna go back to the deck builder. Work out what I've done wrong. So 
so many stats. Whoo! Jeez, Rian's played for so many points, sir. Obviously, we high rolled not hitting the spores. Oh, God. Let's go! We still won against this cheese card. Beautiful. Love it. Alright. Well, let's work out what's gone wrong with why we didn't thin enough fur. So you actually wouldn't even play Afan in this deck because it's just not many. It's just not worth it. It would be like a cheap thinning card. Oh bloody hell! This is wait. This is an eight. Both of them make copies. That's insane. This card's nuts, guys. Wow. I'm I'm super impressed up by how good this card is. Love it. All right, cool. Um. So obviously we want a soldier of some sort in order to play this, which we don't currently have. We can keep this in hand because we can put it at the bottom with Vicar Royal Novice. Afan thought it was Alan. Nice. Uh, obviously we want to keep this in hand. I guess because we don't have lock, I can just bin off. This moment. So it's a whole bunch. Does this place it at the bottom? No, it just goes in your deck somewhere. Army sword, bastard sword. Uh, so... Novice. Rich. The other thing to consider is what the hell we're going to be getting rid of with Blightmaker. I guess like Locke is a contender and then like Cory Blightmaker or something like that. We're obviously not going to want to get rid of one of these. And we're going to be wanting to make sure we don't get rid of a Cavalry. Because before I was just getting rid of the other bronzes, right? But now like all the bronzes are pretty valuable. Uh, so yeah, first card is... We could also start off with like a, try and get a Dodrick through. We don't need Dodrick really right now. We're going to be using this guy, Albridge. Uh, who got reworked. When moved to the top of your deck, you boost a random ally but unit by two and boost off by two. You see he's getting to around 18 points. So yeah, it feels much more like a... It's really, it's really a nice change. I'm a massive fan of it. Yeah, I don't really want to... I'm not really sure what I want to get rid of with... Um... Dead man's tongue, yeah. I mean, in fairness, it's probably going to be a Coria. And a, I don't even have a Blightmaker in deck. And a lock, I guess. Defeat them with hunger, crush them with thirst. Yo, my friend Biomon with the raid of 100. Thank you so much, mate. I hope you had a lovely stream, my friend. So we do have the option of playing Dodrick. Uh, we do have Zeal with it as well. We really want to though, to be honest. It would help the Sunset Wanderers out a bit. Playing a 27 card hyperthin deck. <laughs> That's so dumb, I love it. Something so endearing about playing a, a deck with more than the usual amount of cards. We should also premium and non-premium, because I'd be quite happy to dead man's tongue away a lock, but I don't want the one on top, right? Because I want to make sure I'm thinning my Darlin soldiers. And to be honest, we would rather have a lock probably than a card like this blight maker. Oh, whatever. Kind of can't. Right? I think we 
could already take the dodge right next, put Black Mirror at the bottom. Oh, they just pass on us. That's so good for us. So, yeah, I think we can afford to get rid of one of the locks of Dead Man's Tongue. We're just going to get rid of Cory and this. Um, there's a chance we hit Nickers too. So this plays for four, seven. This plays for nine points plus this, so seven. That's 16, which puts me at 52. They're gaining uh, two, four. And yeah, to be honest, even if we didn't get that, we probably would have just high rolled, uh, banked on high and knickers. Oh, mate, this deck's so fun. I love it. It's so nice to actually be building decks again. I haven't been doing it enough recently. Since I took my break from Gwent, I've been really um, anxious about building decks for some reason, which usually is my like, favorite thing to do, right? So I've already started enjoying the game a lot more now. I've decided that it's time to stop building decks again. All right. Um, we obviously want this in hand. We want this in hand. We actually want Albridge in hand as well, because we want to be putting it on top of the deck. We want to find Snowdrop, so we want to mulligan quite aggressively. We never want this in hand, and of course I really don't want to brick the soldier. It's actually pretty tempting to keep this hand, because I don't want to hit any Darlin' soldiers, and I also don't want to hit uh, either of these two cards, because I need to dead man's tongue them away. I do have a Dodrick. I'm obviously pushing. Let's risk it. Oh! Ho, ho, ho! What a dirty high roll. Let's go. Okay. So I think we start off with Dodrick. That's a weird one though still. I think we start off with Dodrick. Then I think we have to Dead Man's Tongue before we can play the Snowdrop. Maybe. That's a whack heat wave if you ask me. Because otherwise we're also uh, not going to be able to thin the... Mage Assassin, if we... Oh, this is so janky. This is so janky, guys. Hmm. Nice. Nice. I think we can afford to kick both of these cards. Yeah, and that's where the bricks have started to come in. So now we can thin with the Darlin' Soldier. We're actually not going to be thinning enough by one. Because we didn't get the Mage Assassin through, right? In fact, we could thin the Mage Assassin with the Corio and we just Dead Man's Tongue. These we now have a soldier, so we can thin these. Finally, yeah, we could have locked this as well. I think I'm gonna pass though. I just want to try and get out of the round, to be honest. But I guess I should have because of uh, order, right? I could lock this now, but I think I'm just gonna pass, honestly. Okay, guess I'm not gonna pass. Yeah, I had a stink. I should have locked this hero. And yeah, I, I can't play my um, Dead Man's Tongue, right? Oh, I didn't even want to play this. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's like super janky, man. Like the thinning part of it, right? That's the problem here. I actually had, I actually played two, uh, another thing to note is I actually played too many of these bronzes round one, like, because I just didn't have enough things to dead man's done. Yeah, I guess I just have to bin off the Corio Mage Assassin. So I'm always having to kick one of these anyway, right? Looks like a hard deck to pilot. Yeah, it's our first game of it. So the mistake we made here was basically not having enough targets to Dead Man's Tongue. Because then when we didn't hit the Mage Assassin with Leader, we needed a Courier to thin it, right? Because now we're not going to thin bow enough by one.
And yeah, I also should have taken this lock. It would have denied the carryover on this and also given them less points. So we're a good card to get out of them. Yeah. This should just be a really bad matchup anyway, in fairness. It's like a heavy engine deck, right? We want to be playing more against these decks like Onslaught. Control type decks, right? And the locks are a nice addition already as well. Definitely see the value of these locks. I mean... I obviously don't want to hit the Rico. I don't know if we know what's on the bottom. Like, our Dodra got heat waved, right? Uh, I don't have Maxi, which is probably a card I do want to get into the deck. Because I would then be able to take this Mulligan, for example. Kind of feel like we just have to go for it. Yeah. Sad. Kind of had to risk it, didn't we? Now we just have to high roll. Easy. <laughs> we have to have five strength guard or we're screwed, man. Oh dear. You shall never surrender. Yeah, I finished this. A banger in it. You cross the wrong sorceress. Yeah, Reant's hyper thin. As good as it can be, it makes it way more janky, right? Just want to have that Roach and Nickers thinning early. Obviously, this wouldn't have been a problem if we hit the Rico. Like, we just took a risky mulligan and it didn't pay off. Very balanced card, mate. Very balanced. Aaron Dice, definitely balanced, dude. Stiff neck. Let's try that after this game. Okay, it's definitely going to be Star Trek round one. We want to get the snow drop down early as well. Golden neck, golden neck, I have thin. Yeah, it'll be harder to pilot, but I, this, this is this one is not hard to pilot. So much is just janky, unfortunately. It just doesn't quite feel right, you know. Um, let's start with Black Mako. No good wine will come from here, not even compost. As it is an agent. Obviously the lock is tempting too. But... Mm. 
Just kind of got to worry about our own stuff. Because we want to get our own engine down as well. Still slam scenario, which is controversial. Yeah, as I said, I think we just want the engine. We actually want to put Triss at the bottom of the deck. So we could have done it with Exarthia, so it wouldn't have really mad. We don't want to Sam leader until we have both Mage Assassins in hand. Dying here, then. Deck is super janky in it. We could still Sam lead up because then we can um, thin the ma other mage assassin with like the Corrin or so. So we could still go for leader here. Should. Leave them, maybe. Time to die. I'll do so sword in hand. Time for you to die, Duan. Maybe not. My heart holds no forgiveness or tricks. Maybe. the points still. Yeah. You think so sunset, right? I live to serve you. <laughs> that was not in the spell books. I did the maths guys. I always do the maths. Would never not do the maths, guys. Come on. It just felt like it would be enough, you know. Sometimes you just got to trust your instinct. Be careful when you free bronzes, plus bite my left. Cool, thanks. Yeah, we've got that same issue. This deck's super janky. Again, this is probably why I shouldn't have put Maxi in the deck. And we also need the bronzes to thin Mage Assassin. So it's fine. So basically, we can use Blight Maker for the Mage Assassin. Uh -huh. 
super janky man this deck. <laughs> right, it just doesn't feel good at all. Might still win, but we're going to be high rolling right? again. We just don't have enough targets for Dead Man's Tongue. There's no way we can shuffle one of these cards away, right? Swords I smile at. Weapons laugh to scorn. Hmm. Could be even our interest to just take the Mage Assassin and then get rid of Exarthius with Dead Man's Tongue, right? This shit, a fine vintage it would have made. Basically, just needed this card in the deck still, but then I hit Rico. Maybe that was the way to do it: is keep Rico and just reinst the Exotheus and stuff. Probably was better, right? That way. We also actually got pretty lucky with the Mulligans and such. Build your own unit after Maxi. Yeah, but then we also end up with Olbrich stuck in the deck right when we actually quite like to build the Olbrich out. It's not really that good still. I'm leaving the one strength card just because it's a good build target. Wasn't it better to Black Maker Albrecht atop and DMT Bronzes? Uh, I don't think so. Because this still thinned us one, right? So we still thinned twice this way. But we actually got the Mage Assassin on the board, which is like plus four points, right? This is a boom. I guess, yeah, I could see a logic. We get like the extra reveals. I don't know, mate. I'm just making up as I go along, I guess. It does feel bad to reinst already when they've just set up the Simbus because obviously they're gonna kill it. It's not even that good, mate, to be honest. Very confused as to what they just did. Some. Oh, okay. It's a bit weird, mate. Let's high roll. There'll be nothing to pick up when I'm done with you. I think they can't uh, kill us now. Maybe they can. Miss Fish them, you can actually hit both, doesn't matter on the proof. Hey Lemma James, good thanks. Very well. I met my friend for breakfast this morning. Went to the gym. I might be going to like a box exercise class later, which I'm pretty excited for, but waiting to hear my friend. And we still managed to win. It's kind of insane.